right, good evening, peoples. Let's jump in here to Coney and Coin. So what happened on Monday, the 19th? Well, Coin was down slightly, less than half of 1% from 205 to 204. And Coney was up from 1623 to 1630. So the same percentage up, that coin was down. So obviously we're not capped. Uh, there were some, so there were not any share, there were shares bought. There was 250,000 additional shares bought. They did not put any weekly any additions. They didn't use that money for that. They did add an additional synthetic. So here's what the sheet looks like. They sold some positions. So they had 33,050 total synthetic contracts, all in the 210. Since for whatever reason, they want to be in the money instead of out of the money. So out of the money, meaning that the 210 is above their trading price at 204. So they bought these to close and they put on a 200. So they lose money in each one of these, but they position themselves by being at a 200 to have a gain. Every dollar they go up, they go dollar for dollar. Whereas when they're below, they don't, they're not optimal yet. Optimal is when you reach the strike price. So they're just kind of positioning for that, almost like they're anticipating a move up. Uh, at least they won't be so far under. They could go down $4 and they're still within the strike price range. So you can see here, this is a $5 loss on 5,000 shares. And this is like a $4.40 loss as well. So we did take a hit, but I generally agree with the move. So I can show you on the synthetic so you don't see any. They didn't match any weeklies because whatever they sold in quantity of the 5,000 and the 210, they opened that same quantity in the 200. So here's what it looks like. It looks like this. So this went from... Uh, 11 million gain. So there was a 2.775. I put that number over here on the side just to make a note. No, it's not very visible. You may not be able to see it, but you get the idea. So they bought the 1235s. Sorry, they sold those, right? So when you put on additional contracts, you buy the call and sell the put. When you reverse it, you sell the call and buy to close the put, right? This is closing out the 210 for 5,000 contract. This is adding 5,000 contracts on a 200. Same expiration date, September 20th. So they've got a month to play with that. Um, so not, you want to know the quant, I mean, you want to know the net. So it cost them 2,775,000. Let's look at the new 200. Don't worry about what these show down at the bottom for where the current doesn't matter. The, the, you want to focus on, so this cost them the difference between buying the call. This is the traditional ad, buy the call, sell the put because they already have $4 in the money, that's what that 2200 So they didn't really lose on this transaction. It just cost them more cash, but now they have a paper gain on the synthetic, okay? Because they're above 200. They're up at 204, and every dollar for dollar, they go up. All right, guys, so that takes care of that. Let's go look at the weeklies. The weeklies didn't change, okay? So we're still looking pretty good there on the weeklies. Um, we still have the same quantity, right? You all, they always want to adhere to having the same number of contracts on their 
weeklies that they have on their synthetic. So on the synthetic, they took 5,000 out of the 210 bucket and added 5,000 over to a 200 bucket. So their net amount of contracts was the same, hence there's nothing to do over here. Now, this number goes down. Let's put this, I think I need to go to 5, 105. Yeah, so we're at 204.46, slightly down, right? And this number is up, and it is at 16.30. So the net is we're a little further out, right, with four trading days. I was pretty worried going in, and this number was mid threes with five trading days. I feel a little better that it's out there. Okay, so let's see how that all plays out. Let's go over and look at holdings because holdings tells us a lot more, a lot more detail. So now we have two synthetics, right? We have the remaining 28,050, which used to be 33,050, but the 5,000 now are down here in the 200. So remember I said wait, it cost us 2.2? Well, by the end of the day, we're at 2.4 of a paper gain. This is now 12 million loss. So when you add those together, we're at 10 million. Previously, we had been at 11, but rather than add them both together, I'm just kind of tracking the big one. If they do any more moves and they put more down here, then I'll go add the two together. But whether it's 10 or 11, you know, or 12 by only taking this number, it's not going to radically. This is just a view. I just want you to have a window into what's going on. All right. So we closed at 1630. Where is that related to fair value? Well, that is one penny above what the NAV says it should be. All right, guys, so let's just go over a couple of things on what just as a summary, and then I can go to payments. So on the payments, this got added to, right? So there was about 4 million here that changed, three and a half, something like that. So that puts us at 38 cents behind the ball, right? So we have or sorry, short call income right here. Now that assumes we collect everything through our situation. We want to collect all of these, right? And there are either two 12s, which is two of them, and three of them are two 15s. We're at 204. So we're not that far away, three something percent. But let's see what happens. Again, we run by those and it becomes an ugly month. Right now, we have an opportunity. So the payments is telling us that we have short call income if we can keep it of 38 cents, but the synthetic loss, okay? But technically right now, we have a synthetic loss is 12 million. Actually, it should be 10 million. But of that 10 million, that's when you add the two together. So we got a 12 million paper loss and we got a 2 million paper gain. So you really just have to say, we have another 10 million that now we don't have to roll those or take that loss. So what you really want is the 200 to start really moving up and get to 210. Then all of a sudden the 210 doesn't have a loss. And you got a pretty big gain in the 200. That's why I kind of like that move. It didn't cost them that much money. But should we go to 210, 211, 212, we still win all these and we knock a lot of this out. Okay, I think we could get almost all of that. And if we win this, then we got 38 cents so we can get going. And let's see if we can get to a dollar. Anything's possible here, guys. All right. So that kind of sums up. I know there was one more thing I wanted to tell you guys. Okay. So also, I'm going to be putting out a video on what my market forecast is. Normally, I don't do market forecasts. We're entering this dangerous September cycle. 
and I see a lot of storms brewing, and I just want to bring that to everybody's attention, that September and October, the biggest downturns in markets typically happen in September, and October also has that trend. I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm going to give you a lot of detail in the video I'm going to make, okay? But I know personally I'll be moving a little more to cash. I'm not going to close every single thing, but I am going to go a lot more to cash just based on what I see. So let my video speak to you. I'm not trying to generate fear. I'm not trying to do that. It's just a healthy protection uh, scenario for what could be. But I will tell you what I think it could be and give you a lot more detail in that because I know that that can help people because people say, well, bro, should I sell everything? I'm, I'm, on, you know, I'm down on this. What if it just goes down a little bit and comes back? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, ultimately, you're the decision maker. I'm not your financial advisor. So you and your financial advisor can discuss your risk profile. And again, if I'm a 20, 30, 40 year old and I plan to work another minimum 20 or 30 years, depending on the age bracket, then you may not want to do anything. You may want to direct cost average in these things. But for somebody, I'm older, I'm retired, you know, I'm utilizing that money uh, to make income way more income than I really need to live off of. So for me, rolling into cash, even if I take some losses on some position, may make sense. This could be a 60-day downturn. Could be 10, 15% on the indexes. I, you know, again, I'm going to dissect and share a little bit with you. But for people that have dry powder, that want to add more and say, I'm not worried about it. The, you know, there's a risk profile out there for all of you guys. So there's no one size fits all. I'm just giving you a heads up. I'm still in the process of putting together the data for that video. Okay, guys, that's what I got for you. I'm going to roll out my regular stuff here so you guys can keep going. Again, this is Bruce with Target of Wealth Creation. I'm not a financial advisor. This is not financial advice. It's for fun and entertainment. Okay, guys, bye for now.